Marshall, would you stand with us and sing? Praise God today. I'm Bill Butler. I'm the worship pastor here at Exponential. It is good to have you here, whether you're in person or online. Welcome to you. If you're with us in person, you should have found two cards on your seat. There's a blue card and an orange card. And this blue card is for anyone who is new with us here today. When you scan this QR code, it's going to take you to a little web page of sorts where you can let us know you joined us a little bit about yourself. And if you do this for the first time, we're going to make a $20 donation to a charity of your choice. So what happens, you fill it out, and then we'll send you an email with a list of charities to choose from. So please, uh, if you have an opportunity to do this, uh, uh, blue card should be a blue screen on there for you online too as well. 
We'd love to hear from you today. And for everyone, if you can scan the orange card or maybe you have the app downloaded, you can do that as well. Once you go to the to a first time, you'll see a download option or the orange screen there. And there's all sorts of tools here for you uh, to help you out this morning. And, and one of which is to take notes during today's message. All the scriptures that will be used are on there. You can take some notes in that and send, the, send them to yourself at the end there. Uh, you can let us know if you have any prayer requests. We also encourage everyone here at Exponential each week to let us know what your next steps are in your journey toward God. And those are the things that uh, you're working on to change or to, to build into your life or maybe some difficult conversation you need to have with somebody. We'd love to hear uh, from you what your next steps are. And so we'd like to pray for you, maybe give you some resources and support in that, okay? And then uh, there's also sign up for a daily devotional that goes with the morning message. It will come to you each uh, day in your email. So you can do all of that by scanning that orange card. We'd appreciate it if you could do that here today. We also would like you to go to Facebook and check in Exponential. Uh, each quarter we do a different project. And for this past few months, we've been providing books to children in Africa. So for every five check-ins on Facebook, we're going to provide a book uh, uh, through the uh, organization you see here on your screen. And every person you tag will also count as a check-in as well. So please, uh, let's uh, make a big impact with books. Please check in and let's do good together. Now, um, I, I can't believe this already, but next week is Christmas already. It's Christmas Eve on Sunday this year. And so what we're going to do is in the morning, it's going to be online only. So 10 a.m., join us online at exponential.church for our worship experience. Uh, we have something really nice planned there. So please uh, join us. Be on time for that, too, because there's something right at the beginning you don't want to miss either. Uh, so do that, please. And then in the evening at 7 p.m., we're going to have an in-person experience as well. Now, we'll be streaming it, but uh, if you've ever been to our Christmas Eve experience before, you know it's much better in person. So please, if you can join us in person, bring some friends, bring some family along with you. It's a great time to be inviting people. They're more willing to come to church this time of year. So please uh, do that. And uh, let's see if we can get a big crowd in here to celebrate our King of Kings and Lord of Lords who has come to us. We'd uh, love to see you next week in the evening for that. Finally, the last thing I'll mention is there are four easy ways for you to give. For those of you in person, there is a bucket in the back. Uh, there, you can go to exponential.church anytime. Uh, there's a chat link appearing for those of you who are online. And you can text any dollar amount to 84321, and that will get to us as well. And if you're a guest with us today, please do not feel any obligation whatsoever to give. We'd just like to be a blessing to you. And again, if this is the first time, hopefully you've had a chance to scan that blue QR code and let us know you joined us. We can make a donation on your behalf. So thank you. And for those of you who uh, call Exponential Home Church, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your obedience to God and continue to, to wrestle with that. You know, it's always difficult to hand over uh, parts of our finances. That's the one thing we really hold tightly, you know, and want control over. So the more we let God and have open hands with that, uh, it's amazing what God can do uh, through us uh, when we're obedient to him. So thank you again for uh, that act of worship in advance. I think that's all I have. So go ahead and stand to your feet if you're with us in person. Say hello or an even or an early Merry Christmas to one another. Say hello in the chat as well, and we'll continue on.
I stepped into creation with fire for all to see. Brought every tribe and nation to their knees. Arriving with the host of heaven in royal robe and crown. The rulers of the earth all bowing down. But you chose meekness over majesty. Wrapped your power in humanity. Glory be to you alone, the King who reigns from a manger throne. My life, my praise, everything I own to Jesus, the King on a manger throne. this earth and to become more like you. God, we come and celebrate you out of maybe brokenness and sickness and hurting and frustration and all the things that just overwhelm us in life today. We lay it at your feet, at your throne, great King, and ask you, God, please, as we surrender our lives to you again today, would you help lift our eyes toward you? Would you strengthen us in our hearts today with peace and joy, despite all of the things around us. 
and maybe because of the things around us that we can demonstrate your love to other people. Thank you, God, that we get to gather today. And thank you for the word that's about to be shared with us today. May you soften our hearts to receive it, that we would be able to step out and take action and demonstrate who you are in this world. We love you and we thank you in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. mentioned a couple of minutes ago, it's kind of amazing. We're only one week away from Christmas. How many are excited about Christmas coming up just a week away? All right, hands going up. How many are like, I'm already ready for it to be over? All right, a couple hands going up for that as well. Now, isn't that amazing that here we are in the same church, tuning in there online. We're all basically in the same area. We're being exposed to the same songs. We're eating the same types of foods this time of year. We're going to the same kind of parties this time of year. But yet, some people are really excited, and then some people are ready for it to be over. And I think part of that has to do with the sort of emotional state that you come into December when, if like things have been going really, really good for you so far in the year and leading into December, man, the, the lights twinkle a little bit brighter, don't they? The eggnog, it tastes just a little bit sweeter. There's a magic that's in the air. But if emotionally, as you entered into December, you've had a health issue or a financial issue or a relational issue, you're like, bah, humbug. I don't want anything to, to do with this. And, you know, it's amazing that sort of our emotional state gets magnified during the holidays. So, for example, if you do have something health-wise going on, it causes you to miss some parties during the holidays. And so, again, it just magnifies the problems that you have. If you're having a financial issue as December rolls around, it gets magnified because now you can't give your kids the Christmas that you wanted to be able to give them. Or, again, if there's a relational difficulty in your life. Oh, man, the, the holidays just magnify that because, let's be honest, most of our relational issues have to do with close friends or with family members. And so you can avoid, like, family members most of the year, but the holidays, you don't have any choice. You just have to be around them. You have to go and, and be there. There's these expectations, and that's what this series has been about all month long here in December so far, is that we're talking about expectations that we have, because we have expectations when it comes even to the holidays of how things are going to be. We want things to be one way, and then they turn out to be a different way, and all of a sudden there's all this conflict that's going on, and it makes sometimes what should be the most wonderful time of the year the most miserable time of the year. And so it's during these times of emotional and expectational disappointments that Satan then comes in, and he's very, very crafty, because what he'll do is he'll start to plant little seeds of offense. Have you ever heard that phrase before, of like a seed of offense that, you know, you just get offended by the little smallest things? And what we've got to be careful about is if we get this seed of offense inside of us, all of a sudden, man, now bitterness is going to start to grow. I mean, it's, it's small, just this little tiny thing that's like just irking me a little bit. But we allow that to sort of linger and linger and linger, and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. All of a sudden, we're bitter. We're bitter at God. We're bitter at life. We're bitter with other people, especially those that are closest to us. And so we've got to be very, very careful about allowing these seeds of offense to come in. 
I mean, think of it this way. How many of you know that whenever you're hungry or tired, you sometimes say or do things that you don't <laughs> normally do, right? You know what I'm talking about? There's this sort of emotional state of hunger. There's this emotional state of tiredness. And like every little thing just irks you. And you're like, Arr. And that's what I'm saying with, with this, this seed of offense if we start to allow just the little things to bother us, all of a sudden it's going to grow and it's going to become worse and worse and worse. It's going to become a disaster for us. And anytime we get offended, bitterness is not far behind. And again, as I already said, a lot of times bitterness that we have is towards family members. Now all of a sudden you have a recipe for disaster. So it's... It's really, really important at this time of the year because we got these expectations that we're aware of, and I just I can't get offended because I'm just going to become bitter as a result. All these expectations that I've got to be there for the Christmas party with the family, I've got to be there for the dinner with the family, I've got to be there Christmas morning as we're opening up gifts with the family. Again, most of the year you can avoid those people, but now all of a sudden your dad, who was an alcoholic, who maybe abused you as a child, now you've got to be around them. Or your mom, that you know, she still treats you like a kid, like you're a six-year-old, she still nags you all the time. You're like, Mom, I'm an adult, let me alone. Or you got that, that cousin or that uncle that sort of makes you feel like a second-class citizen. They're picking on you about the way you dress or the way you talk, the, the car that you drive, maybe the, the way that you vote. These little seeds of offense, they start to come in. Next thing you know, we're bitter. Our expectation for the holidays is that our days are going to be merry and bright, but oftentimes there's Grinches that make life miserable. And so the question then becomes, what do we do as followers of Jesus to help these people, these Grinches, from ruining what should be the most wonderful time of the year? Well, if you've got a Bible, you want to look at Hebrews chapter 12. We're actually going to look at this verse a couple times throughout this message. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. The writer of Hebrews says this, try to do what? Try to, what's it say? Try to live at peace with who? Everyone. Try to live at peace with everyone. Live a clean life. If you don't, you will never see the Lord. Make sure that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of what? That no root of, of bitterness springs up, causing trouble and by it defiling many. And so the author here says, live at peace with everyone. And the reason is, if you don't, then this, this root of bitterness is going to come, and all of a sudden it's going to poison your relationships. It's going to destroy your heart. You know, Satan would like nothing more than to sabotage your relationship with God and with others. And so he plants these little seeds of offense because he knows that's the way that bitterness is going to come. Now, I already mentioned that oftentimes this comes from our relatives, but it, it comes other ways as well, these little seeds of offense, just little tiny things. Maybe it's something somebody said to you, and it wasn't like a, a huge deal, but now you're offended by it, like a little, little joke, little sarcastic comment. Everybody else laughed, but now you're, you're sort of taking it personal. You didn't say anything. This little seed of offense is there. And if you're not careful, you're just going to keep stewing on it and stewing on it and stewing on it. All of a sudden, this root of bitterness is going to come into your life. So sometimes it's something that somebody says to you. Sometimes it's something that somebody doesn't say to you that causes a little seed of offense to come. Everybody else got complimented on their Christmas dress, but you didn't get complimented. Or you did something for somebody and they didn't thank you for it. Now you're offended. Did all this work. Didn't even thank me for it. Little seed of offense. Sometimes it's something that somebody did to you. They 
maybe just disrespected you in some way. You know, there's just, just something that they did. A little seed of offense. Sometimes it's the opposite then. It's something that somebody didn't do for you. You would ask somebody to do a favor for you, and then they didn't follow through on it. And it wasn't a huge favor, but yet they didn't do it, and now you're offended. Or maybe it was a, a big thing that you needed. You know, uh, it was like, hey, uh, you know, we're, our family's moving, you know, just across town. We need a bunch of guys, you know, on Saturday to come out and help, and nobody showed up. And now what? Little seed of offense. You're offended by it. And again, anytime these seeds of offense get into our hearts, all of a sudden a root of bitterness begins to grow. It's amazing what people will get offended by. All kinds of things. I'll give you a couple of examples that, that I've seen. I know some people that get offended if you don't like their posts on Facebook. You're going, Gilbert, how do you know that they are offended by that? It's very simple. They actually type another Facebook post saying, I'm offended that nobody liked my post. <laughs> now, you guys are laughing at that, but I'm serious. I have like three or four people, and I've got, I don't know, and, you know 1,500 friends on Facebook or whatever. So you see a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> but there's like three or four of them. <laughs> that it's like, oh, my goodness, grow up. I mean, come on, in Jesus' name. <laughs> uh, I mean, th there's things like that that can be offended. Some people, it's the same thing with, like, text. Do you have somebody like that in your life? They're like, if they text you and you don't text back, like, within five minutes, they're like, is everything okay? Did I do something? You know, uh, why didn't you respond back to me? It's like, holy cow, I've got other things I'm doing in life besides answering your text. Or I mentioned this one last week. You know, all of us probably have that, that uncle or that cousin that, that shows up to the Christmas parties. They've got the Tupperware, not full of anything. It's just empty Tupperware. <laughs> they didn't bring anything, but they're going to take a lot of stuff home. And so there's all kinds of ways that we can get offended, this little seed of offense. And again, if we don't nip that in the bud, it's going to linger and eventually turn into a root of bitterness. Now, those were small things. I mean, I haven't even talked to you about what happens when somebody lies to you or deceives you, talks bad about you, criticizes you. You know, I don't like the way you're raising your kids, or they don't like the way you're spending your money. All these things can start to build up. And so here's our big thought for the day if you're taking notes. I can't control how people act, but I can control how I respond. I'll say that again. I can't control how people act, but I can control how I respond. You're never, ever, ever going to be able to control what people say about you or what people do to you or what people think about you. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can control how you respond to that. And so what I want to do is take the remainder of today's message to look at how do we respond when these little seeds of offense have come into our lives. Let's look again, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. The writer says, try to live at peace with everyone. Live a clean life. If you don't, you will never see the Lord. Make sure that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up, causing trouble and by it defiling many. A couple things we need to look at when it comes to this root of, of bitterness. Number one, bitterness has a dangerous root. Bitterness has a dangerous root. You know, Lisa and I have been married for, what, 28 and a half? Yeah, 28 and a half years now. Good for us. All right. Uh, and, yeah, thanks. <laughs> she hasn't killed me yet. <laughs> Again, thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> But we have been so blessed in 28 and a half years of marriage to be able to do all kinds of travel, mostly in the U.S., but a little bit around the world as well. And some of the sights that we've been able to see just from the, 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 the majesty of, of Niagara Falls and the, the power that you see there to sitting on beaches, you know, throughout the world, just watching sunrise and sunsets and just how beautiful that is. Uh, we, we've seen all kinds of, of cool stuff like Death Valley, 
is like one of the most beautiful places on earth. You wouldn't think with the word death in it, it would be beautiful. And that being in the midst of a desert that's like 110 degrees, they'd be like, this is really cool, but not cool, but like <laughs> the other cool, right? Like, awesome. This is amazing. Just, it's just something you need to see in life. The, 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 the drive from um, San Diego all the way up to San Francisco along the Pacific Coast Highway you could technically drive that in a day, a day and a half, but oh man, if you can take like just a week just to slowly drive that and all the stuff that you get to see, absolutely amazing. You know, Lisa and I, you guys know we love it down in Costa Rica and we've been able to do all kinds of so many cool things down there from hiking volcanoes to floating down rivers where you've got like crocodiles like right below you and monkeys above you and toucans above you and stuff. Just amazing things that we've been able to see. But one of the coolest things I think we've ever seen, and this is going to sound stupid because you're like, that stuff all sounded really cool. One of the most amazing things you could ever experience is as you get north of San Francisco then, you get into the giant redwood trees. How many of you ever seen, uh, been, been there? You've been there before? These things are massive. Absolutely amazing. I mean, talk about something that will make you feel small. I mean, I've been to the Grand Canyon. You feel small in the Grand Canyon, right? But standing like next to these trees that are just absolutely enormous is amazing. And I, I did a little bit of, of study of why is it that these trees can like grow to be so big? You know what it has to do with? It's the roots. 12 feet deep at least, 60 feet wide. And what happens is there's a lot of these trees all there together and the roots start to grow together. And now they can grow very, very big, very, very wide, and they can withstand no matter what wind may come their way. Why? Because the roots are deep. Now that's really, really good if you're a redwood tree. But what I want you to see is when you allow seeds of offense to grow, now bitterness starts to spring up, and it starts to send that root deep, deep, deep in your life. And one seed of offense leads to another seed of offense, and now you got more and more roots that are going deep. And all of a sudden, you got all this interconnected bitterness in your life. I think we've all seen somebody where they're just bitter. And I'm telling you, it is tough. To get out of that. Why? Because the roots have gone so deep. So we can't allow these seeds of offense to grow in the roots of bitterness. Now, one way that we can prevent that from happening, it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. The Apostle Paul, he's writing and he says, love isn't irritable, and it does what? It keeps no, keeps no record of wrongs that others do. This is way different than bitterness, right? Because bitterness, it keeps a record of wrongs. Here's how you hurt me. This is what you did to me. This is what you said to me. Here's how you hurt me. Here's how you hurt my family. Bitterness will just keep growing and growing and growing and growing, and the roots get deeper and deeper and deeper. It's harder and harder and harder to kill. And because of that, as it gets deeper, we come to the second thing there on your outline. Bitterness has a poisonous fruit. The fruit of bitterness is poisonous. Look again in Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. That's the third time we're looking at it. Let this sink in. Try to live at peace with who? Who? Big things, small things, it doesn't matter. Try to live at peace with everyone. Live a clean life. If you don't, you will never see the Lord. Make sure that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up, causing trouble, and by it defiling how many? Who? Many. The writer here doesn't say that it's just going to defile you. No, the, the root of bitterness in your life defiles many. There's collateral damage anytime we have bitterness in our lives. Other people are going to get hurt. And I've seen this in 24 years now of being a pastor. When people get bitter, it destroys marriages. It destroys 
families. I've seen it destroy life groups. I've even seen it destroy entire churches. You get bitterness in a workplace environment, oh my goodness, talk about toxic workplace environments. There is collateral damage anytime you allow bitterness into your life. All because one person allowed a seed of offense to grow, and now everyone has to eat its poisonous fruit. And so we have got to be careful not to allow this into our hearts and our lives. Now, doing that is hard, isn't it? We talked about this in our previous series, uh, the People Problem series, that anytime we are hurt by somebody or we're offended in some way, our natural gut reaction is, I want to get back at them. You hurt me, now I'm going to hurt you. But we can't allow that to happen. We can't seek revenge. We can't feel justified in our revenge. That's opposite of the model that Jesus has for us to live. Look at 1 John 4.20. John writes this, Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And so scripture is very, very clear here that we have got to be careful not to allow this to happen. But yet that is what happens so often, isn't it? That we want to accept the love and the grace and the, the mercy and the forgiveness of God for ourselves, but then we don't want to extend that and give that to other people. We withhold it. And so the question this morning then becomes, are you allowing this to happen in your life? Are you offended by the most simple and small things? Do you just keep chewing on it and you lose sleep over it? over just these little minor offenses. Because if you are, again, you're on a dangerous path because that root is starting to get deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I want to do is I want to take the rest of our time here this morning and look at if you have identified something. The Holy Spirit has been sort of speaking to you. How do, how do we go about killing it? Well, Paul gives us some advice in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 to 32. Paul writes, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, do what? Instead, be compassionate to each other. And then he says, be what? Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So let, let's break that verse down. On your outline, number one, I can kill bitterness with compassion towards the person who hurt me. You can kill bitterness just by being compassionate to the person that hurt you. Be tender-hearted to the person that hurt you. Have you ever noticed that when it comes to Jesus, a lot of what Jesus and, and the people that write his word, a, a lot of the advice that they give us is exactly opposite of what our our gut would say to do. You know, Jesus comes along, he says, hey, you want to be great? And everybody's like, yeah, I want to be great. Tell me, Jesus, how do I be great? Give me the game plan. Jesus says, okay, serve people. Get down on your knees, wash their feet, then you'll be great. Oh, okay. That's, that's not what I would have thought. Jesus says, you, you want to get more? Yeah, Jesus, tell me, how can I get more? Jesus says, Give. Learn to give. Oh, well, that's different than what I would have thought. And it's the exact same thing here. You got bitterness? Are you offended easily? Your gut says to get back. Your gut says to, like, just stew on it and, 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 and just keep on, like, uh, trying to get some revenge. But what we read here from Paul is, Nope. Be compassionate towards that person. Be tender-hearted towards that person. You don't kill bitterness by trying to get back. You kill bitterness with compassion and being tender-hearted. Paul also talks about this in Romans 12, 21. He says, do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with what? Conquer evil with good. 
Now, I've shared this with you before, but the best way that you can conquer evil with good, the best way that, you know, you can overcome things with somebody that's hurt you is genuinely and sincerely begin to pray for them. That's how you can be compassionate. That's how you can be tenderhearted to somebody that's hurt you. Genuinely start to pray for them. And I've shared this with you before. Genuine prayer is not, God, please give them hemorrhoids. No, that's not (laughs) what I'm talking about. Yes, that's a sincere prayer, but it's not like genuinely on their behalf and for them, all right? What I'm saying is, pray, God, would you soften their heart? God, if they don't yet know you, could you send someone in your, into their life, even if it's me, to share of your love and your grace and your mercy, your forgiveness? God, would you bless their life? Bless their family, bless their job, bless their kids, bless everything that they set their hand to. I'm telling you, you will not remain angry or offended or bitter towards somebody that you are genuinely and sincerely praying for. And I've shared this before as well. God may not change their heart, but he will change yours. Your heart will be changed. Number two, then, I can kill bitterness through forgiveness. Let's look again at what what Paul said there in Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. He says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be compassionate to each other, tenderhearted, and doing what? Forgiving one another just as what? Just as God through Christ Jesus has forgiven you. You. In the same way you've been forgiven, you need to forgive others. Remember, our goal as followers of Jesus isn't just to know a lot of stuff about him, but it's to become like him. And so Paul says, in the same way that God has forgiven you, learn to forgive other people. And what's God's forgiveness like? Well, God's forgiveness is immediate, it's unwavering, and it's unconditional. And your forgiveness for others needs to be the same. Whoever's offended you, whoever's hurt you, whoever you tend to be bitter towards, your forgiveness for them needs to be immediate, needs to be unwavering, and it needs to be unconditional. Remember, when Jesus hung on the cross, it wasn't for his sins, it was for yours. Big sins that you've done, small sins that you've done, sins that you've done right out in broad daylight for everybody to see, and then those sins that you think that you're keeping hidden from everybody. Jesus died for every single one of those sins, and he's forgiven every single one of those sins, and you need to do the same thing as well. But our problem is oftentimes we like to think of sin sort of in degrees, And we like to compare ourselves to other people. And we go, well, God, my sin isn't as bad as the sin that they did to me, so I'm not going to forgive them. No. How many sins did Jesus forgive of yours? All of them. And so you need to forgive the sins of everybody else as well. We just simply need to do it. You're going, Gilbert, that is just so hard. And you're right. So, again, that's why you got to be praying for those that have hurt you. You need to be praying for them. And also, you need to realize it's, it's a choice. Remember what I said at the beginning? That we can't control what other people do to us, but we can control how we act. We can control our emotions. And see, we need to understand that there is a difference between facts and emotions. Say that again. There's a difference between facts and emotions. The fact of the matter is they did hurt you. They did say something to you. They did hurt your family. They did offend you in some way. That is a fact. There's no going back on that. That is a fact. You can't control that, but you can control how emotionally you respond to that. You get to choose whether you're going to be offended or not. You get to choose whether you're going to forgive them or not. We have got to be very, very careful about the choices that we make. Think of it this way. How many of you ever played the card game Spades? You ever played Spades before? Yeah. If if you're not familiar with the game, uh, I won't explain the whole thing, but I'll just say this. The Ace of Spades is the most powerful card in the game. 
No matter what card somebody else lays, if you lay the ace of spades on it, you win. You win because you hold that powerful, powerful card. And what I'm saying to you here this morning is sometimes in the game of life, people are going to play cards that hurt you. But guess what? You have a more powerful card. It's the ace of spades. It's the card called forgiveness. So no matter what card they play, no matter how much you are hurt, you always have the choice to go, you know what? I'm playing that forgiveness card and I win. The fact is, I got hurt, but the fact is, if I forgive you, I win. And what you need to realize is that unlike a normal pack of 52 cards where there's only one ace of spades, God in your life, in the the deck that you've been given in life, it's full of a lot of ace of spades, more than you'll ever, ever need. And if you discover that you need more, God says, let me just print another deck here for you. There you go. Here's more. No matter what you face in life, you have a choice. Am I going to lay that ace of spades card or not? Again, when you do, you win. Isn't that good news? Satan didn't get the victory. The other person didn't get the victory. Because of Jesus and his death and because of your acknowledgement that your sins have been forgiven, that I can now choose to forgive others and I win. Christianity is simply you playing that ace of spades over and over and over and over again. And so this Christmas, let's not allow those seeds of offense to come into our lives. Let's kill that root of bitterness by showing love and compassion and tenderness to others. Let's learn to forgive others in the same way that we've been forgiven. Why? Because that's how Jesus first loved us. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you loved us first. We love you, but you loved us first. And how did you love us? You loved us so much that you were willing to go to the cross and die for our sin so that we could have not just the forgiveness of sin and not just eternity forever, but an abundant life right here and right now. But God, a part of that abundant life is not allowing bitterness to come in. That's not an abundant life when we're bitter. And so, Father, I pray that this message is spoken to the people here in this room, the people that are watching online, whether live right now or in the future, Lord, that anybody that they've been offended by, any bitterness that they may have, Lord, I just pray that they would lay that down at your feet right now, that they would play that Ace of Spades card of forgiveness. Lord, nobody has ever hurt us as much as we have hurt you because of our sin, but yet you still chose to forgive. Help us to become more like you. Help us to learn to forgive. Again, we we can't do anything to control what other people are going to do to us, but God, through your Spirit, the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to control our emotional response. So, Lord, I pray that throughout this entire holiday, as we do encounter some family members, maybe that have done some things that have offended us or hurt us, that, Lord, this year, it'd be nothing. We would see them. We would give them a hug. We would show them compassion. We would show them tenderheartedness. Why? Because we've already been praying for them. And we already know that our heart has changed And now our prayer is that their heart will change as well. And Lord, again, whether their heart changes or not, thank you that you change our hearts and give us that abundant life that you've promised. Jesus, we cannot thank you enough for what this whole Christmas season represents, that you, God, 
came to the earth in human form to show us the way to live. You came, yes, to, to die for our sins, but you also came to show us the way to live. And again, your way is so often contradictory to what we think in our God <laughs> that should be the way to live. And so help us to dig in your words so that we get to know you more and more and more and more so that we can see how you lived and so that we can then start to emulate that and then start to teach that to others. Jesus, again, we cannot thank you enough for who you are and all you're doing in our lives and all you're going to continue to do. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for uh, coming and being a part of today's worship experience. Hopefully uh, this touched you in some way. The Spirit has been uh, speaking to you. And, uh, you know, Bill mentioned it earlier. You know, one of the, the reasons that we want to you know, always be checking in on Facebook and everything is it does give people exposure to our uh, website uh, when they do that. And, you know, we end up having people that they tune in from all around the world, really, to, to listen to, to messages. And so even if this message wasn't for you today, if you post the message, you know, every, every Sunday, I, I usually by the early afternoon, I, I post the message. It's so easy just to hit that little share button. And there's somebody that you know that right now is dealing with bitterness in their life. And there's going to be something in there they're going to go, man, I, I, need to, I need to watch that. And you never know the power that just simply clicking a button may have. So I'm going to invite you to continue to each, each and every week. It's just such a simple thing to do. Hit that little share button. Share the messages so that we can exponentially continue to make sure that the Word of God is getting out to every single man, woman, boy, and girl on this planet. So we're in partnership with other churches, not just in this area, but all around the world in making sure that everybody gets to hear not only about Jesus' forgiveness, but about the life that he gives us right here and right now. So Thank you uh, so much for doing that. Uh, as Bill mentioned to you a little bit earlier, next week, keep in mind, it is a little bit different. Next Sunday morning is Christmas Eve day, and it's Sunday morning. We're going to be online only. So the band, I think it was yeah, Thursday night, they came in, they did all their stuff. I shot the sermon sometime this week. I don't even remember what day of the week it was uh, that I came in and shot the, uh, the sermon. Uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, different. And Bill also mentioned that the very beginning of the worship experience, there's a very, very special video that you're not going to want to miss. So make sure that you're on time next week as we do that. And so Christmas mornings, or Christmas Eve morning is going to be special because we have some special things. Even some of the things I'm doing in the message is going to be special. By the way, next week is a, a shorter. It's only going to be about a 40-minute worship experience altogether uh, because we knew that, you know, we want you to then come back on uh, Sunday night then and we'll be live here in the room candlelight uh, worship experience as we normally do and all the special bells and whistles and various things that we're known for here at Exponential as we go through uh, Christmas Eve. So make sure that you join us for that. Make sure you're inviting people to join us for that as well. One other uh, little change that I will mention, I sort of corrected Bill the other week that uh, about the, uh, the whole uh, series that we were going to wrap up, the expectation series, the last week of December. Actually, I'm going to wrap it up next week. I changed my mind. Uh, <laughs> I have the right to do that, and yeah, Bill is being prophetic, right? Uh, but essentially, it's going to be the same message. I'm just uh, essentially just making the new series. It's going to start the last week of uh, December, but it's going to be a uh, whole series on the book of Proverbs, and it's going to be about just like little life lessons we can learn as we go into 2024. So make sure you join us for that as well as we get the new year started. So that said, hope everybody uh, has a great week, and we will see you next week both online and in person as we celebrate Christmas. God bless.